Okay, as promised, we're going to skip to 3.9. The remaining part, the beginning part of 3, will do as its own chapter. 3.9 and 3.10, where it's going to follow chapter 2. 3.9, the standard normal distribution. Let me get my notes ready. Don't say that. Okay. We start off with a uh, huge preamble here uh, that will carry through a couple pages before we hit like a real, real example. So um, we've dealt with small sets of data. We've dealt with large sets of data. Um, however, when you have very, very large sets of data, patterns emerge. So for instance, if you had 200 people in a room and you ask them to line up by height, uh, particularly for this section, you'll notice that majority of them are close to average height and you'll have some that are below average height and you'll have some that are above average height. If you were to graph that out, if you were to plot that out, it creates a graph namely called a normal distribution or also known as a bell curve. Uh, and we'll see one in the next slide here. Oops, it helps if I click the thing correctly. There it is. So uh, in this section and the next one, we deal with the concept of a normal distribution, the graph of which is called a bell curve. Uh, anything that has this type of relationship um, has the normal distribution. So uh, the example I just gave was heights of students. You could also see it in um, number of hours people stay awake, number of hours people are in the gym. Um, yeah, anything where it's symmetric, I'll say it that way. Now, in this section, unfortunately, we need a couple concepts from calculus. Um, one of which, the first one, is the concept of area under a curve. Now, if we had, for example, and let me get my pen going here. If we had a graph here, of the line y equals 4 and I wanted to know the area under the curve from 1 to 3 like if I want to know what this shaded region had we would notice that okay this is 4 units high this is 2 units wide 1 to 3 which means this is 8 square units because it's a very nice rectangle and rectangles have length times width Okay, great. Look at our graph for the bell curve. Is that a nice and pretty graph? Nope. So notice this region here is not the same as this region here. But notice I tried to keep the widths the same. So the widths are the same. But since the height changes, the areas are not the same. So we're going to have a problem trying to find area under the curve because it's not a flat line or a trapezoid or a triangle or even a circle, which we know how to find the areas of. There's going to be two ways to do it. We're going to have a way that approximates the answer. And we're going to have a more accurate way uh, that really doesn't come into play into the next section. To do it really, really accurately would be to use calculus, um, unfortunately. So that part's outside of the course. We're going to use this shortcut formula and then also a, um, a chart to figure out these values. Now, as far as the shape of the curve itself, the bell curve, there are two numbers that affect it, your mean and your standard deviation. The mean is located in the center of the graph. Oops. Right there is the mean. So for the blue one over here, the mean's about right there. So the mean tells you the center of the graph. The standard deviation, on the other hand, affects how spread out the graph is. And this is the second part of calculus that we need. Well, 
in the standard deviation for for the oh I'm sorry in the graph itself there is a magical point to where the graph changes from a bowl shape to an arch shape that point in calculus is called an inflection point so for my blue one it's slightly easier to see it looks to be about right here oops stop it why you hate me so that point right there and also symmetrical on the other side that point right there. So these appear to be the point at which it changes from a bowl to an arch, or vice versa, an arch to a bowl. And that's called an inflection point. Now you don't have to worry about that word. Well, I already started to write it down. I'm sorry. Well, the distance from, let me change the color. The distance from the inflection point to where the mean is, that distance is one standard deviation. So as you might guess now, the larger the standard deviation, the wider the graph, and the smaller the standard deviation, the smaller the graph. So on the second one here, and the green one on the left-hand side, that looks to be about right here. Thank you. I don't know why it does that. It's really annoying. Can I have two? I want to have two. So this right here would be one standard deviation. Great. So the mean affects where the center is and the standard deviation affects how widespread the graph is. Now, as a comment, the mean will be using the population mean. So the population mean is this symbol here, which is pronounced mu. And the, sta uh, the population standard deviation is that lowercase sigma we saw earlier. I made that tail way too long, but you get the idea. So mu is going to be the mean, and that little whoop is the standard deviation. All right, so if you would, please watch the video, mean and standard deviation or how the mean and standard deviation affect the normal curve.